This is a description of a photograph uh, called Doll, or La Poupée, by Hans Belmer. Uh, we'll read the student's first draft description first, and then make the picture live, and we'll, we'll make comments about how the description can be improved. Okay, here it is. The Doll, 1934 through 1935, published in Les Jeux de la Poupée, uh, that's for description, this stuff's unnecessary, okay? Um, it is a gelatin silver print with applied color. The size is 13.8 by 14 centimeters, and it is in a vertical position. The print consists of twisted and mismatched body parts of mannequins on a table. The, quote, body, oh, okay, side note, you don't need to put body in, in quotes. Um, a body doesn't have to be a... Um, the body of a mammal. It can be a body of an inanimate object, or just it just means the main section. So you don't have to put that on quotes. So continuing on, the body is bending in an awkward position. There is a head, torso, one leg, and a hand. The head is downward, as if it was kissing its chest. Then comes the chest with colored boobs, one orange and one yellow. Then the belly, which looks like a big golden apple, followed by the hips with a little bit of blush red on the genitals. Then there are what looks like a small red apple and blueberry next to it representing the thighs. Then under the blue thigh there is a leg with no foot. By the head there is a red hand with no arm connecting it to the rest of the body. On the upper right corner of the table, there is a white bow. On the floor, background, there are lines going horizontally and vertically. Okay, before we turn the picture on, uh, going right to the first sentence, my first comment would be, if the size is 13.8 by 14 centimeters, it is nearly a square. So, neither horizontal nor vertical. Okay, and 14 centimeters being 0.2 centimeters larger than 13, then if you had to say, you know, if it was 14 centimeters high, then it is a vertical, or if it was 14 centimeters wide, then it is a horizontal, technically. But it would probably be a better des description to say it is nearly a square. It just that evokes the shape much better, and vertical and horizontal. So while well, you're accurate, just trying to evoke a mental image with uh, now maybe a little more artwork. Um, okay, good, let's see. Okay, so you have individual parts described quite well. It's like you worked right down the figure, right? The body is bending in an awkward position. There's a head, torso, one leg, and a hand. The head is downward. Okay, that's the arm of this chair. Whoops, I'm using the wrong tool here, sorry. That's the arm of this chair, or arm and leg of the chair. It's acting as an arm of the figure. An description of uh, black and white with applied color is accurate. Uh, research how the color was applied, if you can find it. Um, but starting big picture, if you'll allow the pun, um, you went right for some details immediately. But what about the space that the entire figure occupies? Okay, how much space does this thing take up? And is it occupying space really with this? Is this, this is kind of part of it, this chair.
So abstractly, it's you roughly have some offset overlapping rectangles. Here, let's uh, sample this too. See how that's turning into just twisting um, squares within within a s almost you know and they're not perfect squares where and your um, the picture itself is not a perfect square either. So that's an important compositional um, element. And also the bend of the body. And so this is the gesture that the body has. Maybe something to discuss. So you got the right idea. You have the side um, shapes, what they are, their color, texture, um, their location, which way they're kind of looking. You, as you say they're twisted, you say what direction they're twisted, left to right, top to bottom. Uh, I had seen this picture before, obviously putting it up here uh, before I made it go away, before I made the screen go blank. And in reading the description, uh, the head is downward as if it were kissing its chest. I say downward um, without another point of reference, like an initial location. Like instead of telling me it's located here, the first description is that the head is downward. So I'm thinking it's like down here. So if you say the head, which is located. In the top, uh, you know, in a... Uh, near the top left quadrant, if you want, or just left of center and in the top part of the picture gives me an idea that it's in here somewhere. And then you say it's pointed downward, say it's pointed downward and looking a little right. That, and then getting, nailing that location down starts your description of everything else in play because you have that as an anchor point, and then you start describing. And once you started describing down uh, the parts that make up the figure, the uh, description is, is, is pretty, pretty apt. Um, saying that uh, this looks like a big golden apple. Tell me, tell me that it's round. OK, it's a round golden apple. Um, red apple and blueberry, these are just, you know, I, to me, they don't look like fruit. I understand why you could make that description. It's a nice description, but just the fact that they are round is the first step before thinking that they are fruit, okay? Um, if you're gonna, and, and it's important, if you're gonna mention the red blouse on the genitals, um, let us know what uh, gender or sex that the genitals are. It's a an easy, like half a sentence description that narrows it down, you know, quite a bit. Um, okay, beyond that, uh, da -da 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 -da. white bow. Okay, what about the yellow background? Okay, yellow background. What texture is on the yellow background? What tone? These stripes, you describe the stripes, um, the texture of the seat, where it's located, whether it is straight or at an angle. There's caning in the seat, okay? Um, and there is textured background here. This is like a uh, some kind of canvas or 
sackcloth. Notice how the grain of that is going this way. The grain of this other cloth is going this way. So describe that. Heading from on an angle leaning slightly right, like 30 degrees. You know, on an angle leaning slightly right, 30 degrees. On an angle leaning slightly left, like 20 degrees. Something like that. Floor, there are lines going horizontally in. Okay, you say on the floor, background, there are lines going horizontally and vertically. Okay, um, that could just be. That could just be this. Be a little more descriptive about that. There are two different cloths with different textures that have lines that can be described as horizontal and vertical. Okay, this is a different set of horizontal vertical lines as this. So just be specific about that. Uh, beyond that, let's see, I would, I would describe the contrast, whether there's a lot of dark uh, shadows or a lot of bright highlights, or if it's kind of middle tone, it's high contrast. Like high contrast would be in this zone between what goes off the picture. This is just my background here. This is your, you know, the picture you chose. So if it transitioned from really bright to really dark quickly, right, that's high contrast. If you look at um, this area, I'm, I'm purposely not including shadows. I mean, maybe I should actually. If it goes from really light to a little darker slowly, then it's low contrast. So you can talk about that locally, or you can talk about that overall. Okay, I think that's that's plenty to go on. Uh, that's a good start to the description, and um, hopefully this video gave some insight to expand the description. Remember, the formal description is just a description of the forms, the things that make up the work of art. So describe them. Don't describe any meaning or story. Uh, that's the next step. Um, only describe what can be seen as simply as possible. 